actually, I, I'm thinking here, and it, it, it's it's very important to think. You know, it's very important to think, to reflect, to ask questions, because we usually uh, go into the inertia, correct, and do the things every day, the same things, and we we forget to to remember that we can do things differently and improve some parts of our business. Um, and, it, and it's not because people are stupid, dumb, or blind. Inertia is very, very strong. You know, inertia is this force that brings us to behave in the same way, even when we need to change, even when we know we need to change. And we know yes. we have problems, and but we keep trying the same solutions, the same tactics. It's like trying to not eat chocolate when you know you're not supposed to. Exactly. It's very hard. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the way we live. It's the way we look at reality. Okay. Mm. For, I'll give you another example, okay? So Amazon, right? Huge success. When you read the book about Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. it's called The Everything Store. It's a very good book. You see that there is a chapter that talks about their early years. I mean, I remember when I read it, I, I'm, and this chapter says that they hit a major constraint in their operation, which is how to operate their distribution centers. You see, at the time, distribution centers were designed, the whole processes, how to store the products, how to pick the, store, the products, how to align the, the trucks, all those distribution center processes. They were designed to handle large batches of, of shipments of the same type of products on predefined routes mm -hmm. because distribution centers, that's, you know, they were not stores, there was supplying to stores or to dealerships. But Amazon, the business model was different. Their distribution centers were supposed to be fulfillment centers. Mm -hmm. They were, right, they were selling to customers. So their distribution centers were supposed to be stores, mm -hmm. sending small orders of multiple products in the same package to infinite addresses. Mm -hmm. Immediately, all the systems, all the processes that they they that everybody followed, the inertia, right, of handling distribution centers didn't work. Mm -hmm. And and it created a huge constraint, a huge bottleneck. How do we know it's a constraint? Because that's where work was stuck. That's what delayed the delivery times to customers. I'm talking about the year 2002. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm reading this book and I'm reading how they focused on the constraint in the distribution center and how they solved it. And I'm saying, wow, it's, it's like they read the book, the goal and applied it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I've, you know, I flipped to the end of the book just on the references mm -hmm. and it's written there. I remember this quote very well. So we didn't write this book, obviously. Mm -hmm. And the reference said the following, it said, and here are a, da it's the, in, in, toward the end, there is like a chapter that says Jeff Bezos reading a uh, reading list, recommended reading list, mm -hmm. and it specifies twelve books that he recommends any executive in Amazon to read. One of them were one of them is the book. goal, and it says <laughs> the following. I'll tell you how they describe the goal. The goal, written by my father, Doctor Leo Goldratt. And it says an exposition exposition of, and it says the following: the goal was the Bible for Jeff Wilkie. He was the COO of Amazon for Jeff Wilkie and the team that fixed Amazon fulfillment network. Wow. So I was like, oh, now it makes sense because <laughs> it's a very it sounds good very, fa very familiar, right? Yes, congratulations on that. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really nice. So yeah, inertia is very strong. And unfortunately, like I shared with you about Amazon, often for us to break inertia, what drives us to do it is a crisis. A crisis. Yes. And how to and do only it a crisis on force us to say, okay, we cannot continue and behave in this way, yeah. right? And how to do it on purpose uh, without suffering or with less suffering? So my my father actually had a very interesting technique because he, he also said, why wait for a crisis to change? Yes. Don't wait because to, to make fundamental changes under a crisis is not easy and most companies don't succeed to do it. So how do you do that? You need to create an artificial crisis. What does it mean? He said, if you have a tough problem that 
you cannot solve, which basically means you're also in inertia. You're trying the same solutions over and over again, and it doesn't work. Uh-huh. Listen carefully, it, because it's counterintuitive. What you need to do is to raise the bar. Make the objective much higher. Mm-hmm. Make your objective much higher. So you, it's in, what does it mean much higher? In a way that it's impossible to reach this objective with your current practices. And this force you to say, okay, to reach this objective, I cannot just think how to optimize my current processes. I really need to think differently. Okay? So, th- and now it's better you do it before reality forces you to do it. That's why it's not a crisis yet. You, you just set the objective for yourself to force you to think differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is very valuable. I heard, I heard something similar, but with different terms from a person I highly respect here in Brazil. He's called Jorge Paulo Lemon. Do you mm-hmm. know him? Like He's the creator of Ambev. He bought ah, of course. Burger King and a lot of yeah, companies yeah, of he founded. And he, I remember when I sit with him and we talk for some hours and I asked him about what is the secret to success. And he told me about five pillars. One of them is dream big. Because when you dream big and you make your goals very, very high, just as you said, uh, it sounds impossible for the team to reach. So they start to think differently. Exactly. Instead of just improving the process, right? Exactly. So usually when people set high goals or tell us we need to set high goals, we think it's in order to motivate ourselves to do more, mm-hmm. to dream big. But and it's, and it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But... One of the real benefits of setting high goals is just like you said, is to force you to think differently, to force you to re-examine your practices, your processes, to break inertia. And, and that's the method to break inertia before there is a crisis. So creating this artificial crisis Basically. prevents you to have a real crisis. Correct. Why, why is it artificial pri- crisis? Because it's impossible to reach this goal with your current mindset and process also. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Sometimes we do it to ourselves. You know, we, we, we commit to very high goals and then we suddenly realize that it's impossible to reach them. <laughs> do you think this works for personal stuff? I do. I really do. But in a, there is a twist here. So... For personal development, you need to change a little bit the perspective about constraint, okay? Usually when we talk about flow and businesses, we say constraint is the weak link, right? The mm-hmm. the one that really has the lowest capacity that can break, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Then we need to think about how we get more out of it. And, but for personal development, it's a little bit different. The constraint still is the thing that it's, it's what it's your resource that dictates your ability to achieve your goal. It's always like that. However, it's not the weak link. It's actually your strongest link. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's because what it, what you, after you realize what you want to achieve in your life, it doesn't need to be changing the world. It could be to have a happy family. Whatever is make you feel fulfilled. Tá pensando em mudar de profissão ou ter uma profissão nova, começar a trabalhar? Já pensou em trabalhar no mercado financeiro? Já pensou em trabalhar com liberdade geográfica, poder trabalhar da onde você quiser? Ou também já pensou em fazer um salário empilhável que ano a ano você vai ganhando mais? Então eu vou te apresentar aqui a formação de consultores de elite da Portfel. Essa é a formação que vai te pegar do básico e levar ao avançado para entregar tudo o que você precisa para fazer parte do time dos melhores consultores financeiros do Brasil. Mesmo se você ainda estiver dando seus primeiros passos nesse mundo, tá bom? Olha só o que, que você vai ter. Bootcamp presencial. É um evento presencial que vai te transformar em uma verdadeira máquina de captação de clientes. Você vai ter um treinamento com o Thiago Negro e com os melhores vendedores do Grupo Primo. É uma experiência inédita 
inédita no mercado financeiro, tá? Encontro com os sócios do Grupo Primo. Você terá seis encontros online com diferentes sócios do Grupo Primo. Em cada um dos encontros, você vai masterizar uma habilidade essencial para o seu sucesso como consultor. Você terá calls quinzenais com os analistas da casa de análise que mais cresce no Brasil. Serão conversas e informações de bastidores que só um profissional de investimentos tem acesso, tá? Sinta-se privilegiado, pois um consultor de elite merece uma equipe de análise de elite também. Treinamento de comunicação. Você saberá exatamente o que fazer e como fazer para que seus clientes enxerguem você como um profissional de elite. Tudo isso pela mesma equipe que faz os maiores influenciadores de finanças do país chegarem aonde estão. Conversas com gestores. Nós te daremos acesso a conversas exclusivas com grandes gestores de fundos de investimentos no Brasil. Pouquíssimos profissionais no mercado têm esse tipo de abertura com os gestores. Mas nós te colocaremos para aprender com os melhores. Nada mais valioso para um profissional de investimento do que estar por dentro de aspectos qualitativos dos fundos. Oportunidade para atuar na Portfel. Após completar a formação, você agenda sua avaliação para começar a sua carreira na Portfel aqui no Grupo Primo, a maior e melhor consultoria de investimentos do Brasil. Esse será o início da fase mais promissora da sua vida, eu tenho certeza. Acompanhamento com consultores de elite. Nós vamos te entregar o que nenhuma outra formação te entrega. Mentores que já são consultores de elite para te ajudar a avançar mais rápido. Esses consultores já possuem sucesso na carreira de consultoria. Sabem como chegar lá e vão te pegar pela mão para que você avance anos em questão de meses. E o melhor de tudo, você pode ter seu dinheiro de volta. Todos que captarem 10 milhões de reais nos primeiros 12 meses como consultor terão 100% do seu dinheiro de volta. 100% dos consultores que atingiram 10 milhões no último ano conseguiram em menos de 12 meses. Então você também pode conseguir, beleza? Quiser saber mais, quer se tornar aqui um consultor de elite, quer trabalhar na Portfel, quer ganhar dinheiro no mercado financeiro, ajudando as outras pessoas a enriquecer, link na descrição, QR Code na tela, faça a sua inscrição.